<sighs> Welcome back to the channel. Like I said in the last episode, today we are going to design and build our own dashboard. We have a lot of stuff here, a lot of fucking shit. The old frame for the dashboard, this part with the heater control, which is supposed to be part of this whole contraption here. It's supposed to be connected here and you can see that this is broken. This happened because what happened in the accident is that I collided in the dashboard in the whole contraption with my right knee. It hurt a little bit a few days afterwards, but it's fine now, it's completely gone. We have to repair that. After that, we can get to building. But before we're going to do that, I'm going to show you what I have planned and what parts I have. I'm not really sure if this camera set up here is going to show everything that I want to show, but we have this crate full of parts and we have this crate with some parts and then we have a big one over there Whoa! but let me go through uh, both of these first so we have some sort of lamp which is from a Ford from a 64 Ford this oval here and here says for FOMOCO which means Ford Motor Company and the method how you can identify which tail lights and lights like these and also some of the times um, I think headlights too and also side markers. If you look down here there are two numbers here. It says 64 so basically this is I would guess a a license plate light uh, from, a, from some sort of Ford which was constructed in 1964. Then I have this right here some sort of I think it's an interior cap or maybe some sort of cap that uh, goes on the outside of the B-pillar. Maybe from a Pontiac Fiero. Oh yeah, here. It says 72. I'm not sure if you can read that, but uh, this is made in 1972. Then we have a lighter. This goes in the driver's side door where you can then adjust the mirror, you know what I mean? I'm not sure what the word is for it, so yeah, let's just put that here. Another liar, some more lights. Does it say where they come from? No, but they make funny noises when I shake them. Then what we need, spoiler for later, very much later actually, there are going to be a couple of videos before I use it, I mean, you have this little piece here. If you know what this is, you know what I'm going to build in the future. This should be out of a Corvette. This actually allows you to start the car uh, with a touch of a button. I really like that and I wanted this. What this part does is it goes to um, it goes on the back side of your speedometer and you screw it in. You basically sandwich it between your speedometer and the cable itself. And I think one revolution here uh, that's going to bridge those both contacts. So this was used to track your speed at all times. But maybe if I can come up with something clever, we can use that to give this car a modern flair. Oh yeah, and then we have this nice chrome fuel filter with a very nice glass. The actual filter element here and here is missing unfortunately but this will look really nice once we clean it we have a clock question for you guys if you can identify any of those elements that uh, i'm going to show here and uh, you know where this is from please tell me in the comments i really would like to know an oil gauge and we have this german temperature warning light it's basically said engine temperature stop not sure how to translate this we could use that but this would collide with some other plants, so we won't, but this is still in here. A washer and wiper, actuator, a water temperature gauge, nice. This even turns with all the key. We have a, uh, well, we don't need that. We get to the parts that we are actually going to use. Spoiler alert. I went to some, through some ideas before starting this video. Uh, actually, a whole week before that. We have some very nice, uh, what the fuck do you call those? They're not actuators. It's a fucking switch, how could I forget? This part here, which is one of many switches from one car, another clock, this temperature gauge, and this is basically, I think from a tractor, another washer, uh, wiper switch, a speedometer that is 
broken. Another ignition key that we don't need. Another ignition key that we don't need. A part of a cigarette lighter. We have an emergency flasher switch. Another ignition switch. Another all gauge. And we have the part of a, another switch. I think there's also some from this set, but I'm not really sure if this was from a convertible because it says top. The actual switch is missing. We have a water gauge here. I have another light. This is a glove box uh, opener, key, you know what I mean? Ah, yes. And we have some nitrous buttons for the steering wheel. Hell yeah. Oh, this actually comes from a computer, I think, but you don't have nitrous. So, no, you have a light switch. What the fuck is this? Ooh, this could be... No way. Ooh, ooh. Yes, guys, look, I found the missing, uh, the actual switch. So this is from a convertible. I really would like to know from which car this is. Uh, I can say that because of the <laughs> huge cables and this is up or either down and this is down or either up. So that's cool, but... I'm not sure I'm, I'm holding on to that, but I'm not sure if I would need that for anything. This is also from this set. Ah, yes, and then we have the map and the dome light switch. Another wiper switch. This should be a brake light switch. Another braking switch. Uh, yeah. In this chest are actually the parts that I'm going to use. So, map dome light, panel light, cigarette lighter. This actually has a built-in lamp, that's so cool. I wasn't able to get those parts out of this template that I that I made. Wiper, lights, high beams, low beams. Yeah, I'm going to talk about that later, but let's just put them here. A friend of mine sent me this package because I, I told them, hey, I need some parts. I want to build my own dashboard, but I lack some gauges. Do you have any that I could use that look classic? And he said, yes, it's full of fucking parts. Oh yeah, wait, I forgot some. This here is the choke actuator from I, I know for sure that it's from a jaguar e-type the very first one series one or one and a half or something and i really like this and i'm going to use this for my choke another clock that i'm going to use the coolest gauge of them all oil pressure water temperature those three gauges here this is two times uh oil pressure and this is water temperature but a i'm not going to use those gauges it's, uh, themselves because A, they are blue, and this doesn't really fit. And B, I already have two nice ones over there. But the cool thing about them, they have some sleeves here that are tilted. That's really cool. Maybe I'm going to do something with that, but I'm not sure. Now the real fun begins. I know I said that like a fucking bajillion times. Don't fucking hate me for this, guys. But if you haven't noticed by now, the blue ones, and those two here, and if you could read them, I'm not sure, I have to go through the footage. You may have noticed that they are Italian. So all the parts they sent me are from Alfa, from a Alfa Romeo. So we have... Da, 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 it's fucking huge. That's what she said. Nice. This will be my revolutions per minute meter. I know I said that blue wouldn't fit, but he only sent me blue, one, uh, blue speedometers, so... We're going to use this blue speedometer. Bam! Ah, careful. I have those two as well. Uh, I actually found this in this whole mixture here. A clock with some hole, uh, holes. <laughs> the German in me wants to escape. We have, <laughs> we have some wood in here. I have this speedometer that's also from the same car as this. Why don't I use those ones that are much more fitting? After a little research, those two here are from a BMW 2002 CS and if you know those cars, they are pretty rare and if you know how the market works, the parts for this car are so fucking expensive. Like, bruh, I don't have the RPM meter. I only found two listed. One of them for 250 and the other one for 500. I was like, no, not for one gauge. If they would sell me all three of the gauges for 250 or 350 even, I don't care. I would say yes, but no. Okay, so you want to build your own dashboard. That's cool. That's a great idea. 
If you take your time, it will be fucking awesome. What do you need? Well, of course, first you need a table. Preferably not- oh, you need a table to build a- Dashboard. I thought you could build it in mid-air. Well, first of all, you have to decide if you want to keep the same gauges you have in your current dashboard. I got my dashboard and I just fucking realized something. Oh no. The thing that I just noticed is the clock. Because when the accident happened, the, the, the battery cable immediately, immediately was cut off the negative side. So if this is true, the accident... Oh no, this is so fucking sad. The accident happened uh, at 2 p.m. 9 minutes. <laughs> And 37 seconds. This is so fucking sad. <laughs> I hope you can see that. Oh, hell no. Uh, anyway. <laughs> this is the original dashboard for this car. You might say, hey, why don't you keep it? First of all, I like the idea of designing my own shit. Second of all, when the accident happened, the dashboard itself was like... Okay, let's jump. It broke the tabs here, here, here. I, have, I would have some trouble repairing this because it's way too fucking dank and loose. Also, what you can see here, 7,337 kilometers. Why is that? I zeroed it out when I bought the car because I thought, hey, you're going to be the only person that gon that's gonna drive it for the rest of your life. So I want to check out how much uh, kilometers I put on it. And we have to do this, uh, the same thing with the other speedometer because I want to continue where I left off. Why do I show you my original dashboard? Well, it's because after you decided if you want to keep the original gauges or not, which is tricky in this scenario because they're all part of one cluster and you would have to build some crazy shit to lay them out differently. In case you want to keep them, you can start thinking about the layout. In case you don't want to keep them, either, in, uh, like in my case, my dad bought so, so much fucking shit in the past and that I can just go through everything that's on this table here. But maybe if you don't have that, you may have to go and buy some. Uh, get them from eBay or from your local neighbor that's also a car hoarder. You also may want to keep a certain style. You can see that the outer ring here has a step. Now this is your only gauge with a step like this. Every other one looks like this. This one here is going to stand out and maybe ruin the look. It depends on what you build and how you build it. Keep a certain style that counts for all optical differences, he says, and then takes a blue speedometer, build it, build a template like I did here, and look at it for a week like I did, and make sure that it stays looking good. I made a template. I made another blue template. I made another template. So how does this work? Let's not touch this at all. Don't mind this hole there. This was an idea that I had, but it didn't work out. This is the wiper uh, switch, fork lamps, normal lights, parking lights, uh, high beams, low beams, rotation meter, clock, temperature gauge, speedometer, water temperature gauge. Yes, those are actually different. I'm going to tell you about that. Oil pressure gauge, cigarette lighter, candle light, map and dome light, and then you have the choke. In the RPM meter, <laughs> you have four lights. There, 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 and there. Wrist cowl. I think that it means heater or heating, but this doesn't have to do anything with the heater core or with the heating in the car. This lamp is somewhat coexisting with this here. Generate, generator is basically the charging lamp. Luki and Fari is high, uh, low beams and high beams. Then you have Benzina. <laughs> well, it's just. Uh, your gas gauge. Down here is a big rare red lamp. Let me grab a flashlight. The cold lamp, I'm going, I'm not sure how it worked when they, when it came out of the car, but where this is from and actually this clock's from because they have the same style. When you start the car and it's cold, the cool lamp is always on. When you get to operating temperature, it switches to hot, to the red lamp. And this rescaled light up here is Basically the same thing as the cool lamp because 
I think this is on as long as it isn't uh, the car isn't on operating temperature and as soon as it turns off the car will be on operating temperature so you would know okay no I can just flow it and this is basically the same but cooler I'm still going to connect this one to this cool lamp because I have a spare lamp there and I don't want that to be not illuminated at all without function also what you need to make sure is that you have everything planned because once you build it and make it really clean there is not much room for corrections or things to put in especially the way that I'm going to do it I'm going to make a list of the things that I want to have in my dashboard and you should make the same so that you don't forget anything Take your time, leave it for a few days, don't build it immediately in case something comes to mind. There's quite a bit of stuff going on. We need to make sure that we have everything on this list. I hope that I didn't forget anything, I don't think so. We have the wiper switch, the wiper fluid actuator. Uh, we need a some form of actuation for that. So, but yeah, so we have wiper, we have that. We don't have wiper fluid yet, we have parking lights. We have low beam, we have high beam, we have fog lamps, the RPM meter, the clock, the temperature gauge, we have two of them, I don't know how to call the other one, this uh, that sits in the middle. We have the indicators, we have the speedometer, oil pressure gauge, cigarette lighter, panel light, Dome light, we have clock. What? We have a generator light, we have a low beam indicator, we have a high beam indicator, we have a gas gauge, we have a gas reserve light or indicator, we have the speedometer reset cable, but I haven't thought about the position in the dashboard for that yet, so and also not for these here. So we have Four, four things in total that we need to take care of. Okay, I figured it out. So, first of all, I, have a, I found a button to activate the, the wiper washer fluid. And I'm not sure if this will look good, but maybe I will move the fog lamp switch to the left and put this right beside it. For the next problem, let me check my list, where to put the defog switch for the rear window. As I said, this is broken. This is normally where the ashtray goes. Since I'm not smoking in the car, I'm going to form a sheet of metal and place this in here. I'm willing to rebuild this or change or modify this if I'm going to put anything else in there later, but I'm not going, uh, but I'm not going to mess with this whole dashboard itself. I also removed the strip. This is just the rough um placement this will be adjusted on the millimeter so that everything will look nice and i think this would be the right placement of course not on uh, not on top but yeah this should be the final placement for that and the speedometer cable that's on the back here it goes from here to i think around here in length so I think if we put it right next in the middle here that we have a lot of room to turn it with, with my hand because my hands are fucking huge. If I'm going, if I would place it here, it would be a pain in the ass to get that. So I think either right here or down here maybe, but I think this would be a cool placement. Do you remember when I already checked the flasher indicator? But where are they? Little bunny. <laughs> where are they? The plan is to use those lamps here. Like, not this blue, obviously, but uh, you can get the uh, those th same bulbs, same form factor, but in green. Going to place them... Ooh, that's a cool idea. I would. I was gonna say right, down, uh, right in the corners, but wouldn't it be cooler to put them here and there? Let's clean this whole dashboard, this whole black thing that I don't really still not, don't know the name of and after that we can 
repair this and then we can clean every part. I'm super excited for that. But first, let's clean this and repair this. Now that we have all the parts clean, we can repair this. So there are four pieces here, I think. I'm not sure if this is part of it, but we are going to weld this in actually. I'm gonna show you how that works. You can see that this piece fits in right here. It pops into place, you could say. It's even holding itself, not anymore. It won't look bad in the end, no matter how we how we connect it again, because remember that this here is, used to be the ashtray, and we're going to cover that with a aluminum sheet. So the cracks here, here, down here, no one will look. Yeah, no one will look down here. So that's not a problem at all. We have three bags with different. Yeah, staples. This one says flat staples, this one says corner staples, this one doesn't say anything. But we actually need this most of the time here. So what this does, let me get this open. Now those are the three different staples we have. We have this here, which is kind of a wavy form. And we have this here that won't stand by itself because it is too thin. But can see that it is also wavy form but much more flatter that is because for example if i would take this if you would if this this has a crack here and you would try to weld it together this wouldn't fit in here all the way because it is too big so what you do is you take the flatter one and put it in here I'm not really sure what those here are for. Maybe those are for parts where it isn't necessary to hide the staples because because they go all the way through, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we don't need that. So you're going to start with this one. This device here has three holes, one at the side, one diagonally and one from the front so that you can reach almost every position and what you do is you take your staple put it in here and then you press this button and hold it obviously and then the current that goes through here will heat it and then you can melt the parts together it's uh, very durable so we are going to do that not from the front but from the back we need to make sure that it pops in place completely like this you have to be careful to not pop through for the other side and one thing that i noticed is that you if, uh, when you are at the point that you are mostly in you can just twist it a little bit and that will ensure that you have maximum contact points and it doesn't back out again <music>
Okay, now that we have everything cleaned and welded back together, because it was cracked all over the place, I put it completely back together without the fan outlets. This will give this whole thing much more stability. As you can see, it's not wobbling around anymore. You can push this down here a little bit, but it remains in, in the original form. So that's what we want in order to take the exact measurements we need. The original dashboard that was in here had this cover. I mean, it looks good, there's no discussion about that. But there's one thing that always didn't seem right to me. Have you already noticed it? <laughs> Let's play some Dora. <laughs> Where is the ocean? <laughs> no. This is almost 90 degrees and then 90 degrees back. Same thing here. This is just 45 degrees or something, or even less, 30 degrees maybe, then back. Same thing here, maybe this is a little bit steeper. Steeper. I think what, which, uh, what would fit this whole thing much better would be a dashboard that follows this contour down here. Since this frame here is completely straight, we are going to measure the height of that. So, let's do this. Well, it's a whole another week, actually two weeks forward, I think, and I ran into a small problem. The flat surface here isn't wide enough to support both of these giant gauges and those two as well, but I think I have a solution for that. But I don't want to keep imagining stuff, so let's just take this sheet metal and make a some sort of raw template for it like an actual piece that will fit in there so I can take really precise measurements and see what's going on. So yeah, let's just do that. Don't mind this, um, I just cut myself blood. But now, after a lot of grinding and marking and stuff, this should fit now somewhat. Let me test. Uh, 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 uh. Whale noises. No, 
not too bad. I took too much away off this corner. Here and here too, but we can mask, we could mask that. But since the uh, edge here doesn't fit the edge here, because this here has to be a little bit more to the left side. So what I would need to do is measure the difference from this edge to this, and then just trace a line along here and then grind down to that line so that this whole thing moves a little bit to the left. So the main difference, obviously, is the corners because this is 90 degrees and this is 40 degrees because it follows this line, uh, this angle here and here. All right, boys. It snowed, so you already know what the fuck is going on. No, Luca. That was the most pathetic burnout I have ever seen. Just because you do such things when it is icy doesn't mean that it is acceptable in this social world of car enthusiasts. Oh. My. God. I want to stab my eyes out with a lollipop handle. You are such a disappointment to your father. Please spare us another one of these and kill- Go in there, please. That would be very nice. Yes! So now that this here matches up, this looks almost cool. But only almost. Basically, this band and this band here are like one or two degrees off, too narrow, because they move in towards the end. So they aren't really parallel here, but can fix that easily. But the main thing that I was considered about was that the middle part here, where the tachometer and apriammeter goes, uh, wasn't in the middle, you know. Uh, that this band was too much to the left or to the right and this one uh, this one too, but It looks fairly Fairly centrical so Let's do this cut out here. Okay, so the idea is that we need this cut out here and We can easily do that with the help of something like an, uh, like an anvil, I hope at least. So, what I have in mind is to flip this upside down, put a piece of paper under it, and then trace it out. So, let's push this down a little. Mark this here, mark this here, and then just go around like this. Yes, this looks good. funny noises. If that is correct, then 
Let me trace this out. Could be worse. Let's put it like that. So let's grind this out. Okay, so I made the cutout. And let's just fucking hope that is. Get in there! Thanks. That this looks somewhat okay. Like this, then this, this. Oh, it's a little bit too narrow, but not too bad. You can widen this a little bit and then it will be okay. Ah, and yeah, so far so almost okay. <laughs> So far, so almost okay. So let me try to fiddle a little bit around and after that, I will come back to you. Well, hello there, guys. It's good to see you again. You may have wondered, why isn't there another video coming? Well, there's a reason behind it. The workshop where I worked with my Camaro was my father's and we had our differences over the past few years. I decided that it was time to part our ways. So I cut contact for now. Uh, I don't want it to be permanent. I moved and I took my Camaro with me, but I still have to find another workshop where I can work in, obviously. I mean, the name says that. <laughs> uh. But I'm happy with my decision. It's good to build something for my own, finally. I think it was the right decision. Obviously, it brings some negative traits with it. Like I said, I have to find a new workshop for myself. Uh, maybe with some friends, I'm not really sure. Then buy the tools. Sometime in the future, it will continue. Honestly, I can't stand doing nothing. I don't like it. Funny thing is, I have an underground parking space and it's now chilling in there in parts. <laughs> I'm always imagining what it will be like when it's going to be finished one day. Hopefully loud. I mean, underground garage could be loud. It was kind of hard to make that decision, but I had to do it. I'm not going to clarify it anymore because it's private. But yeah, just for your information, it doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't any videos coming until I have a new workshop. Because as you saw, I started building my own dashboard and Theoretically, I can just take things that are needed for the dashboard and just finish it at my new work because it's also a workshop. But for now, for the next, uh, let's, say, let's say two months, give me a break. Let me get some resources together. We could continue. After finishing the dashboard itself, I have to make a um, wiring circuit and a wiring, wiring, a wiring, a wiring circuit and a wiring diagram for it. So there is still kind of a lot of stuff to do till I need the car. But after that, I need the car because I have to modify the wiring harness that's in the car, get rid of uh, the rust. Don't, doesn't have any rest holes, but uh, we store the interior, the sheet metal, and so on, and then go from there. It has to be in that order, because uh, like I said in the video, I don't want to make any mistakes regarding the dashboard, because doing some doing changes afterwards is gonna be quite hard so I'm taking it slow and then 
after we are done with the dashboard and the wiring harness from the inside of the car we have to i'm not really sure if the wiring harness connector from the outside of the firewall has anything to do with the technical aspect of the car for example the thermal gauges and stuff but we're gonna we're gonna still finish up that car just in another location at another time so Maybe there will be some off-topic videos on the channel in the meantime, I'm not sure. We're gonna get there. I'm still dreaming of that car, even though I can't really remember how it feels to sit in it and drive it. But yeah, that's what I wanted to say, because I can imagine you, some of you wonder. Have a good time, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.